All right, I have just conducted the movement segment for uh, India. So looking here at the Kashmir Valley, you know, I, I honestly think it's going to be super difficult to get anything done in the mountains. Uh, be extremely hard. Armor and mech is pretty much worthless. Of course, light infantry and mountain infantry do get bonuses, but it's like a plus one DRM. I think this is, that's just regular infantry. There's some mountain underneath that. That's all mountain, so all that will negate. We don't have a lot of defense factors there, so I'm not going to worry too much about this pass right here. Of course, I have it backed up with a headquarters and an artillery. You can kind of see I move the artillery in there. Maybe that'll deter the, the Pakistanis. And then, of course, the, what is that, the 14th Corps? 14th Corps is moving this way. Again, more, I think, of a defensive maneuver. Because, again, I think trying to, especially with these guys, these guys are weak on the attack. They're only two strength. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, moving over to the south of Kashmir. I did move in, move up some of the 16th Corps. All right, I do think I might have a better chance in this area. So just getting these guys in place. Are these guys overstacked? No, that's combat outpost. So that should be good right there. Moving this headquarters up so he can provide supply. Uh, only moved, I think I moved a couple of units of the 9th. Or actually, no, I think only this armor brigade is anything that I move. I'm, I should have a pretty decent chance here. Armor has a pretty good advantage attacking into flat, so should be all right. Um, the second core, I laid down the headquarters bridge. I can't cross it. The, the bridge gets completed at the end of the movement phase. So basically, all, some of these guys just kind of went around and crossed this minor river and up into here. I'm thinking get some of these spots right here capture that little town right there that'll be worth a couple of VPs um, so I'm using the bridge I'll move across uh, this big boy right here this um, you can see that guy uh, let's see right there so that's a 1811 that's a that's a big one right there so I need to definitely get him over that way and then over here I didn't draw too many arrows just because there wasn't a lot of all the movement was like within this area. Dropped a bridge right here, so hopefully I can get across the Sutlej River over here. And then either go this way or this way. Most likely this way. Uh, this is the 10th core. So there we go there, and there we go there. Because I mean, the only this is a major river, and I can only attack across that bridge. So there's a combat outpost. Looks like a pretty good division right there, and it's also fortified, so that's bad news. We need to we need to get that guy surrounded if we want to even try to get across that. So those are the movements. Now I believe, yep, I can do the combat segment. So I'll go ahead and show you what combats or get all the combats plotted out, and then we'll move on. All right, everybody, I have plotted out all the attacks that India is going to conduct. So I have one, two, three, actually, it's right there. I just had to move these out of the way a little bit, just so you could, or I could kind of see what was underneath. So one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna try that one up there too. I've already calculated all the odds, and basically all we gotta do is roll it up. So let's see what happens. Um, all right, let me see if I put that there. Yes, you can still see that. All right, good. So well, let's go ahead. We'll just start from left and move to the right. So we have one and a half to one with a minus one column shift. So that's good. We want to roll low. One and a half to one. Um, but then we go a column shift, which actually makes it a, it would have been one, actually, it's funny. So, what is that? That's in flat. Oh, I didn't even look at that. Yep. 
So basically that turns that into a one-to-one. -one. We actually get a better result. So it is one step loss and a retreat. I believe that is a combat outpost, which cannot take a retreat. So guess what? Eliminated, which is what I wanted to do. That was the result that I wanted was a combat outpost. I will advance after combat. And that's the same thing I want to do here. I basically want to eliminate that combat outpost. So that is a two to one with no column shift. And that is also in flat, so that's probably not good. Two to one, flat, a six. So that is, it looks like both sides take a step loss. So again, combat outpost is eliminated. Unfortunately, you take a step loss. I did not want that to happen. That's actually a pretty good unit. That hurts. But we want to go across there. And then we will go here. Let's see, that's a one and a half to one with zero column shifts. I don't know if you can see that writing. Nope, you can't see the writing right there. So anyway, I wrote it on the Plex. So one and a half to one with zero column shifts and I get a minus one DRM. And that is basically this hex right here, this hex right here, all focusing on that spot right there. Just let me double check. There's not a river there. Yep, there's no river. Um, we did throw in artillery support and we threw in the headquarters support as well. So I ended up being a one and a half to one, zero column shift with a minus one DRM. That is a four, turns into a three, that is attacking into marsh. Um, what was that? It was one and a half to one. Marsh one and a half to one and it is a three. So that is attacker loses one, defender loses two. So my lead unit was this. So the, the first casualty has to come from your lead unit. So there we go, that is done. Um, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. This top unit was the lead unit because it had the better efficiency rating. So he will take a step loss. And then I guess I'm going to have to take the other step loss there. All right, that strike one marker remains, that remains. Um, basically, everything else stays. Nobody, nobody was moved out of the way. All right, now we'll go here. It is this hex and this hex, both hexes are attacking that guy right there. Um, we will use, we'll use that armor brigade right there as the lead unit. So it ended up being three to one odds because um, armor and mechanized, I think armor, let me double check. Is that, is that rough? That's into flat. Armor is times two against non-armor and mechanized. That's light infantry, which is, or not light infantry, leg infantry, which is considered non-mechanized or non-armor. So that's 12, 18, 12, 18 for a total of 36. So it was 36 to 10, which ends up being three to one odds. With the remainder, so that's where you get the minus one DRM. So it's three to one, minus one column shift with a minus one DRM. So that's a six. That's in flat. So three to one flat, which turns into a two to one because of the column shift. So I didn't figure that column shift into that odds right there. So it's actually now a two to one. Two to one in flat with a six. So it looks like each side takes a step loss. Who did I say my lead unit was? I think it was this armor brigade right here. And you take a step loss. All right, and that combat is done. All right, we will go up here. The hardest part about these combats is just figuring out your odds, column shifts, and um, 
DRMs, your die roll modifiers. That I mean, that's what takes the longest. Once you get that figured out, I mean, you can see how fast the combat goes. But don't, not to scare anybody away, but you know, just just computing your odds and your column shifts and your DRMs, it 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 takes a little bit. Um, the time it took me to do all those was a couple of minutes. Um, it's also made easier, at least in this game, by the fact that I didn't have any air assets to commit to this. I had no helicopter assets because I used all those in the strike phase. Um, but if you're playing a larger game like, uh, you know, Korea or anything with the U.S. where the U.S. has a ton of air power, then you're going to start throwing combat support aircraft in there. Then it starts to get even more because then you got to... If you're throwing combat support aircraft, you have to see if they're detected. If they're detected, you can intercept them, and then you have to do dogfights, and ew. then it gets really lengthy. But this this really didn't take that long. All right, so this is one to one odds, zero column shifts, no. Um, let me let me look here. That's eleven. Let me think, how did I get one to one? Because that's 11. And that's 18. Do I have 0.5 to one? Now it's going to round up. So 11 to 18 would be. Um, it's not a half. It would have to be 9 or lower. It would have to be 9 to 18 to be a half to one. So. Fortunately, in this game, things round up in favor of the attacker. So it ends up being one-to-one -one odds. That's a zero, which really, really worked out. Um, so that's zero in rough. Rough, one-to-one, -one, zero, minus one, and a retreat. So we can go ahead and move that out of the way. So there's a retreat. I don't remember. I think. Let me. I need to. I need to look this up. I think if we pass an efficiency check, then we can stay in place. Hold on. I need to look that up. Yeah, these guys are in. Where were we? We're here, right? That's a fortification. So you can try to ignore a retreat. So you have to pass pass an efficiency rating check of the lowest unit in there. So the lowest ER now is a four because that guy took a. He took a step loss, so if we roll lower than a four, then he passes the efficiency rating and they can stay there. So he did. So these guys do not have to retreat. That sucks for India because we kind of wanted um, we wanted to take that spot. So oh well, that's what happens sometimes. And then last but not least, can you see that guy? Yep, you can see that guy. So that is two to one odds with zero column shifts, zero die roll modifiers, and that is in mountain. So that's not gonna be good. So two to one odds in mountain. What is that? All right, I think, oh actually, you know what? Those are mountain infantry. I think I get I get a actually I actually I get a minus one DRM because that's mountain infantry attacking, so that turns into a six. A six on the two to one in a mountain. It's like the attackers take a step loss. And these are mountain infantry. These guys are supposed to be trained at doing this stuff. And that's just a combat outpost, too. That's kind of embarrassing. But hey, that's the way things work sometimes. So anyway, that is all the combat for India. We will move on to the elite reaction. Um, so I'll be back in a little bit. All right, I've just conducted the elite reaction move. So that is non-initiative. So Pakistan units with efficiency ratings of six, seven, or eight. They only have sixes, so there wasn't a whole lot to move. Um, you can see right here, position some of the first core they, they see what's going on down here so I wanted to get some guys here um, that's gonna be a that's a good spot for them so and it's in flat so they'll get armor bonuses and all that so that really the Indian second core might be in for a uh, 
a tough fight right here. If they can get that spot, then they might be all right. And that was kind of the point was me moving here was to try to get that town right there. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a tough fight right here. Um, so we've got the 5th uh, Brigade right here. They moved over to here so they can have a little bit of flexibility maybe to help out right here, which is probably what's going to happen. And then down south, we've got some of the 2nd Corps guys moving up. They saw that the we've got the bridge going down here. They couldn't make it, couldn't quite make it because of this canal right here cost them extra movement points which they didn't have that would have really dealt a blow especially getting this division right here too down to there so it's going to be a uh, the 10th Corps might be a, again might be in a bad spot here pretty soon if they don't get a bunch of guys across this uh, this river here so there you go that is the elite reaction move we can, now we'll do exploitation movement and exploitation combat probably won't do exploitation combat just because of the, the negative column shifts. But we'll be back in a little bit with what happens. All right, I have conducted my, what is it? It is the exploitation move phase. So that mean, or that allows the initiative player to move whoever he wants. Um, so we did, I did some jostling around of units here. Uh, they're too close to draw an arrow but basically just you know kind of maneuvered these guys in here so wanted to get everybody across that bridge before the the Pakistani army could settle in um, and then I could do exploitation combat which allows me to provide combats with any units whether they move or not with a two column shift left um, there really isn't anything advantageous because right here it's a fortification so that gives them minus two two column shifts left plus the exploitation combat shifts left that's four column shifts left that they would get the defenders so not there but attacking across that canal um, attack values are halved so we're looking at six um, and another 6, 12 to 14. It's just, it's not advantageous right there. Um, even with the headquarters support, probably not going to happen. I'm leaving these two guys in place. I could have moved them, but there are fortifications here. So I'm going to say that they are, there's really, there's not an official rule about clearing fortifications, but it does say in there that, hey, you know, once you've occupied a, a fortified hex, um, you can consider once the once the the front line has moved forward, or the line of battle has moved forward. You can assume that these have been cleared. Well, they just occupied those, so I'm going to say that they need to be there a little bit longer. That's a division. That's a division. They need to be there through the end of the turn to actually clear those fortifications out. So that's kind of what I'm assuming they're going to do. Um, and I also hesitated to move into that city because then they would have to be put under a clearing marker and I would rather have you know two divisions in there so that's kind of why I didn't I didn't do that but that's obviously something that we're going to target uh, let me see here the second core got these guys across I got a so actually that's mine now I need to to mark that on there that is I think a town is town is one victory point so that belongs to me now and I got that big division across which is definitely what I wanted to do because the Pakistanis have a big division of their own right there so definitely wanted to, wanted to get the wanted to get that guy into place so and this guy will be he'll be reserve um, and then over here up in the north closer to the Kashmir Valley I just moved this headquarters up to where it can support in either direction and I also did the same thing with this headquarters and that infantry brigade. Just now he can support the fight for that to take over that combat outpost, which is kind of ridiculous, but whatever. It's a combat outpost. So again, that's the reaction movement, and I'm not going to do reaction combat because I just not I where things stand right now, especially in these fortified hexes with the red dots it's 
and that's basically where the the only places that I could really do combat. It's it's not advantageous. So now it's the react or excuse me, uh, reaction combat. Not an initial player performs combat. So now the the Pakistanis will have a chance to fight back. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, everybody. I am about ready to do the reaction combat segment. After looking at oh, looking at most of the places where the Pakistan army can do can conduct combat, which is quite a few places. Most of them are not very advantageous to them. Um, you know, it's going to be stuff one-to-one -one combats with two unfavorable column shifts because they're attacking into fortified positions or whatever. Uh, where, there we go. I had to find my pointers for a minute. So here's the two that I found. So there's... This is Lahore right here, so we're going to do these two here on this stack. It's going to be one-to-one, -one. Um, minus one column shift, minus one DRM for the remainder. Let me see. Why is, i got to figure out, I, it shouldn't be, it should be minus two column shifts why would efficiency rating oh no yes no that's the lead unit so we're tied so there's nothing for the so that's obviously going to be the lead unit so I think it's going to be minus two column shifts for the fortification why did I have minus one written down there I don't know ah, I bet you it's going to be minus three, actually. Look at that. I'm doing all, that all wrong. Um, so it's minus two for the fortification. And then another artillery gives you another column shift. So that's three column shifts. Do I want to do that? See, technically, depending on how you want to play the rules with the fog of war, you're not allowed to examine stacks, right? So... I'm playing against myself. I really don't care. It's not competitive. Nobody's making money off of this. Hmm. Do I really want to do that one-to-one -one and flat? I mean, that's still somewhat decent because at least it is flat. That's honestly really terrible for the Pakistanis. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. So I probably did all that for nothing. Let's Let's rotate these back. I don't know what that was, but this is the end anyway. No, actually, you know what? There's a whole other basic movement in combat phase. Um, I want to say I probably would have used that, I think. I don't know, man. It was yesterday that I was, I was about ready to do this. I was about ready to do the whole thing, and I got an error on the SD card. So I stopped. I downloaded what I could. And I don't remember exactly what was going on. So yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. That will not be good. I think this one will be a lot better. Let's look. Let's just double check. Let's double check my math here. So we have 14 combat factors to the good, well, to the good, to India. 14. It looks like... 20 that's 20 if I could get one more if I could get one more for the Pakistanis I could get 1.5 to 1 odds right now that's 1 to 1 yeah I would need one more so that's 1 to 1 which I have written down there so 1 to 1 um Let's see here. Those fortification. Why do I have two minus two there? It shouldn't be, and here's why. Because those are Pakistani fortifications. They don't work. Fortifications aren't going to work both ways. So it looks like that'll be zero column shifts. There is a remainder. And I 
think that's a town. Do you get any bump benefit for town? Technically, you do get plus one for being in a town. So it looks like it's going to be a straight up one to one fight. So we'll that we'll do that. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me get my viewfinder turned on here. Can you see that? Yep, you can barely see that. All right, one to one fight. That is in rough. Yeah, it's a straight up one to one and rough. Got a seven, not going to be good. So that's two and one. So the attackers lose two, the defenders lose one. Um, I said this is the lead unit, most likely. Ooh, do I want to? Uh, two, two. Three. So actually, you lose a little bit more. Yeah, we'll, we'll reduce that infantry division. And you lose two. So both of the, each one of those is going to take a step loss because you can't take two step losses from one unit until all the units in the stack have taken a step loss. That's going to hurt the Pakistanis. Look at that. That reduced those guys really good. Well, probably wasn't a smart move on the Pakistani side, which... Let's be honest, it was my side, right? I'm, 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 I'm the, the commander-in-chief of this fight. It looks like I made a poor decision right there. Um, so that didn't work out well. That one didn't happen because that was just bad. So that's reaction combat. It looks like now we are going to go to the second strike phase. Let me just say, I don't think there's going to be a second strike phase. Um, nuclear weapons, nope. Do we want to do missiles? Hmm. Pakistan has one missile. India has... Looks like 12. Why do I have 12? I don't know. I've got 12. That's what the marker shows. That's what I'm going to stick with. Hmm. Let me, let me move this out of the way real quick. I gotta see. Yeah, okay. I can do a helo strike. India and Pakistan, neither side has any air units that, can, that are capable of doing strikes. So we can do missiles. India does have a helicopter. There's no naval bombardment. I can do headquarter strikes. I really don't think I'm going to. Headquarters are kind of. I don't think headquarter strikes really work that well in this game. They, I mean, it's an option, but there are other things that are much better than missiles. Let's look. Where is the strike table? Yeah, I think my headquarters, at least for the time being, are probably better better utilized doing support supporting combats so the big question is uh, India has one helicopter and we've got missiles do we want to do anything um, I still definitely want to take that air bit that installation out That's about all I think that I want to do with India. Pakistan really doesn't have a lot. They don't have any options. They have one missile. They have no helicopters. They do have, again, they have a couple of headquarters. Hmm, do I want to do that? That's, ooh, that's, that's actually a decent headquarters. It's got a range of three. If I could take that guy out, that would be... Boy, these counters, they flip so easy when you're not trying to flip them, but 
I could take that guy out, that would be a huge blow to what's going on. Well, that that's more of an issue right there. I'll tell you what, I will be back. This is, this is uh, me speaking out loud could take a while. All right, I think I'm only going to do, for the second strike phase, I think I'm only going to do this right here. I'm going to throw two ballistic missiles at that installation and let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Just messing everything up here. There we go. All right, so that is installate. That's a hardened target. Arm target, scud missile, I need to roll fours or less, I think. All right, so I need to get a four or less. Let's see what we got. We got a four. That is a strike one. It already has a strike two. I think that's destroyed. Installation, strike two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's destroyed. So, we will go ahead. That is actually, let's do this. Remove that. That is destroyed. Boom. Got it. That is a... So I believe that is only... So that's a... That was a strike one that happened. So that's a strike one collateral damage. A one will cause some form of collateral damage. Air mobile point and one air unit is reduced. Pakistan has no air mobile points left. Those were destroyed previously. Well, they only had one. So I have to choose an air unit. I think, let's see what we got here. Let's see what this, that J10, that's a 210, that's a 20. So I think we'll hit that Mirage. All right, because at least he still has a uh, combat support factor left out of all that. So that's probably the, the better. What does that one do? Yeah, I don't want to do that. What about F-16-211? No, I think that Mirage is probably probably the, the best decision that I can make right there. All right, so second strike phase is over. Now we go to second supply phase. That does happen. The first supply phase did not happen. I think the only place that they are is going to be out of supply is up here in Kashmir, where we got that uh, interdiction. So these guys Let's look here. These guys here might... Mm, nope, I think they can go from... Can we see Islamabad? Nope, you can't see Islamabad. So these guys... There's no way... I'm going to say those guys are out of supply. I don't really think I was going to do a whole lot of attacking with them anyway. However, now it might be a little bit more advantageous for the Indians to attack this way. These guys are probably not going to be out of, out of, or be able to do anything as far as attack wise goes. Now, I think the only other location might be here, although they are supplied from there. Um, so that should be, I think that's half. Yeah, these guys are good. So that is, I think it's six movement points. I want to say it's six movement points from a, uh, so that's one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. So those guys are good. These guys are definitely good. So that, yeah, that's over here in the cashmere is really the only place where that happens. So second supply phase is done. Now we do the basic movement and combat phase. All right. All right, so I will be back with that and I'll show you what I've done. Yeah, so the only movement that I decided to do, because most Indian forces are already in place, the only movement I did was just right down here. I just basically, I moved this guy that's been reduced out. So these two guys just switched switch places. He was here, moved him to here. He was here and moved out. So I want to, because both of these guys are, are reduced. So I want to try to press that advantage right there while I can. Everything else it looks like, they are in places where they need to be. So the next thing is going to be combat. I will go ahead and do the same thing I did before. I'll go ahead and plot out all combats. Um, show you what I get as far as odds ratios and all that, and then we'll roll it up kind of live. All right, I have just decided where I'm going to do combats. It looks like it's going to be a nice combative, combative turn here. Um, did all calculated all the odds and all that kind of stuff hopefully to the best of my ability and uh let's see what we have here so why don't we just start so this is down in the south you're looking down in the south right now so let's see here We're, we'll just start here and then we'll just work our way north all right so uh, there we go this is where we're going to hit. We're going to attack from here and here. So both of these two hexes. Um, we have a combat outpost and an infantry. I think that's a yeah, it's a division, and they're fortified. We're attacking across the river. So normally, since that's just infantry there, normally we would get a mechanized infantry advantage which is 1.5 times your attack strength so that would give them a 7.5 which would round up to an 8 so they would have an attack strength of 8 however because they are attacking across a bridge you don't get that so they're halved now so they're 2.5 attack strength each which rounds up to 3 so that's a total of 6 and then that is 10 so that is 16 plus 2 for the headquarters is 18 which I have the 18 right here and we have a total of 12 defense factors so 18 to 12 is 1.5 to 1. Um, two column shifts to the left for the fortification however the efficiency rating bonus is a plus one column shift and the surprise because it is turn one is another plus one column shift for zero column shifts because it was clean there's no remainders boom there you have it right there so 1.5 to 1 in flat, which is a 2. That is one step loss and a retreat. So the combat outpost has to be the first step loss. So unfortunately, there are no victory points to be gained with elimination of a combat outpost. However, the combat outpost is gone. Um, Ignoring a retreat. So they are in fortified position, so they may try to ignore the retreat. So if they, if they pass an efficiency check, then they can stay in place. So I need to roll a five or lower. They did not. That is good for the Indians, not good for the Pakistanis. So now we have to retreat. Oh uh, man, I don't remember. I think retreat. Let me look. I don't remember if it, what it is. One hex, two hex, retreats. Nine, eight. Retreat the full number of hexes called for by the terrain they occupied during the combat. What the heck 
does that mean? <laughs> Two hexes. hexes so you are going to I guess we have to go one I can go here or here yeah we'll go there all right now we can advance after combat well I want to get these guys across the river that is the better place for them now I need to see if I might be able to press that attack. Let me let me dig into some stuff and find out. All right, so there's no combat. Um, I can advance after combat, and mechanized units can advance. If that hex was empty, they could have advanced two spaces. So the retreat was two hexes, so a mechanized unit can advance also two, but this guy is in the way. Um, there is no... I, didn't see anything quickly. I didn't see anything as far as a uh, second attack. So that's good enough. I think the, the Indians are kind of happy with that. All right, let's move over to here. To This is the outskirts of Lahore. Now, India really wants this because that's an urban area. Uh, it's going to be tough to get it for the simple fact that you have to conduct clearing operations, but clearing, you know, that's, you know, if they could get that, that would be... That would be big. Uh, let me see. What do we have? Can you read that? And it looks like you can read that. So it looks like 19 to 6, which makes 3 to 1 odds. Um, we did throw in artillery support and headquarters support. Gives us a net positive plus 1 column shift. With a minus 1 die roll modifier because of the remainder. Let me just double check. Yep, there's no town or anything in there. So that's what I got. And I'm sticking with it. Let's go ahead and roll. That is Marsh. And that is a combined attack. So that's this hex and this hex all going into there. Let's see here. That is 3 to 1 in Marsh. With a plus 1 column shift, which basically turns it into a 4 to 1. And minus one to the DRM, so that's a one. That is amazing. That gives me a, that equals out to one step loss and a retreat. So let's see what we have. Well, both of those are really, The infantry division is stronger on the defense, so I'll take my step loss from the armor. That is a brigade. That's one victory point. All right. And this guy, he is in fortifications. He can try to pass an efficiency rating check. His efficiency rating is a four, but it is reduced by one because of the strike marker. So that is at three. Let's see if he can do that. He does not. So he retreats, I think, two again. It's a two hex retreat, so we will go one, two. There we 
go. Move that out of the way. And I can advance after combat. I think that was the lead unit. I don't remember if the lead unit has to advance. I really don't want to advance the lead unit, but we will. And that guy will go in there, and he was there. Mm, what do we got? Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, that, that could maybe come back to bite you. Eh, he should be okay. All right, there we go. Uh, we'll go to here. You see that one? Yes, you can. All right, so we got a total of, let's move you out of the way, 36 to six, which makes it six to one odds. This should be, this should go pretty well for the, for the Indians there. Um, with zero column shifts and because it was a clean division, there is no remainder, but six to one is about as good as you're gonna get. Where is that six to one in, and that is flat. So that's the max column on the uh, the attack chart. So hopefully it'll be pretty good. Two. That is one attacker loss, three defender losses, and a retreat. And it's because, let me see. Let's see if you can see this. So where do we go? So we're on the six to one in flat. What did I roll? A two. Hopefully I can hold that camera steady. So because that text is in red, um, where was it on there? All right, here we go. If the defender can't satisfy in red text columns, reduce attacker losses by one. So let's see if, I don't think that the defender can satisfy, because it's three step losses. There's only two units there, they're both reduced, so that is basically two step losses. So the attacker has doesn't have to take a step loss, which is good. And let's see what we got here. We got an armor brigade and an armor division. That's, so the divisions are worth a little bit more. So the first corps just lost a brigade and a division. One point for the brigade and three points for the division. So that's a total of four points. So that is, we now go to 12. 12 VPs. That was big. All right, who wants to move in? Um, this guy was the lead unit, so you will move in. This guy definitely is moving in. We want that big, beefy armor division to go in there. These guys are kind of overstacked, but that's okay. And that is it. What do we got here? We got this. So it's going to be a combined attack with these guys attacking here. Um, 28 to 8. Who is my lead unit? Probably this guy right here because he's got an efficiency rating of 6. Yep, it's going to be that guy. So 3.5 to 1, which makes it 3 to 1 odds. We get a plus 1 column shift. And because it is not a clean division, um, 1 minus 1 for the remainder on the die roll modifier. So that is flat. 3 to 1 flat. What was the column shift? Plus one column shift, so that goes to four to one. And that is a five. Minus one, one step loss and a retreat. It is also red text, which doesn't matter because the attackers weren't taking a loss. But you are gone. That is an infantry division. So that is another two victory points the Indians gain. Um, I don't like... I need to look at that. Does the lead unit have to be the one that advances? I think it does, but let me look. All right, the rules say one attacking unit of your choice. I don't remember what happened over here or which one, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I will advance. Let's just advance both of these. We'll do that which will set us up to try to get that right there. And it puts that headquarters in jeopardy. So he's India's, or not India, Pakistan's probably gonna move that headquarters out of there because he doesn't want that guy getting hit as well. Loss of a headquarters is a pretty big deal in 
when you're playing with advanced rules. So a headquarter, an enemy division or a headquarter is eliminated is three victory points. Plus the added benefits of um, headquarters being able to extend supply, headquarters being able to add its uh, range to attack modifiers, being able to perform strikes. Yeah, so headquarters is a, it's not fun to lose a headquarters. All right, let's go up here around Kashmir. All right, so we've got two. So we'll go ahead and do that one first. All right, what do we have here? Three to one odds, minus one column shift, and minus one for a remainder. Uh, and we are attacking, I think we're just, I, this is in the wrong spot, but. We're attacking this combat outpost. We want to get him out of the way. Pesky, pesky combat outpost. So that's mountains. So three to one on the mountains. Mountain, three to one. We do lose a column shift, which turns it into a two to one. So that's a four and turns into a three because of the DRM. So that's one and one. So combat outpost is gone and we take a step loss, which is going to be, hmm, why don't I use that one? What were my, what was that combat outpost? That has an efficiency rating of five. I think I had to have been using this guy because the combat outpost has a ER of five yeah I'm pretty sure it was this one that got hit which stinks and we will go ahead and advance all of those guys into there and last but not least um, I'm taking a gamble on this one but they're out of supply, so I figure now is the time to try and do something like that. Um, being out of supply doesn't reduce your defense, but it does reduce your attack. It reduces your efficiency ratings by one. So I think that's kind of why I did that. So we're looking at one-to-one -one odds. I get a favorable column shift, number again, because we are doing surprise plus the artillery, so that negates the fortification. Mm, hold on and yes because their efficiency ratings are now considered five I have an efficiency rating bonus so surprises plus one ER or column shift efficiency rating is plus one artillery is plus one they have a minus two so that get, that's where I get the net plus one column shift there are no DRMs because the remainder and that's a town underneath that so that's mountains one to one which turns into a two to one All right, let's see what we get, five. Each side takes a step loss. And this was the lead unit, so you're taking it, which stinks because that was the big unit. Each side takes a step loss and we have to retreat. So there we go. Actually, it doesn't matter. They're all, they're all the same. Okay, so you get reduced. Now I think I think there's a fortification there. There is. Um, thing I need to do is I need to see because they have to retreat I think the whole stack has to retreat retreat procedure
All right, see, that's something I didn't see before, but I'm not gonna go back and apply. If the unit fails the ER check to remain in place, the unit may either retreat as normal or lose an additional step. All right, one roll is made for the stack, even a stack of one, and the result affects the entire stack. There we go, all right, so. I'm probably going to not retreat. I'm going to ignore that. I'll end up taking the step loss, the additional step loss. So I need to do, I think the ER is four. It's gotta be the lowest guy in the stack. No, oh, it's an ER of five. And we failed, so I will take an additional step loss because I'm not giving that up. Now the other ones that I did earlier, I'm not gonna go back and redo any of that because that's just a pain in the butt. Um, and I think this one, where was it? This one right here. I'm not gonna redo it either, but I think there was something that's right there. I think I forgot the surprise. So it might've been a zero column shift. Um, let's see here, what did we have? So that was, that was the lead unit, he was a six. A six to a five on the combat outpost. That's plus one column shift. Mm, surprise was plus two column shifts. I don't know what it does. You know what? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So that is the combat. Now we do reaction. So that is going to be Pakistan. Let me see here, what is it? Reaction movement, non-initiative, second player moves any, all his combat units. So now Pakistan will move and then Pakistan will fight. So I will be back in a little bit. All right, not much movement on the Pakistani side. Uh, we moved the headquarters down here. I don't remember, I don't think I, I might have moved this guy back here. I don't remember. Um, sometimes I don't put the arrow on there if there's a lot of, I don't draw an arrow if there's a lot of movement around or that this space is kind of confined. confined. These guys repositioned a little bit um, here. So we've got, we've got that division there, which that they kind of need to do that. They need to protect their urban, the urban centers and urban hex is worth four victory points. And Lahore is two of those. So that's eight victory points. And then it looks like the first core, they, they were, poised they were kind of right here they could have gone either this way or this way but i think they kind of decided to head east and see what they can do to stop this advance so that's kind of where they went we got two two big divisions there that's it's probably going to take a minute for the uh the second indian corps to to do anything there and then I think the only thing I did up here was I just moved, I consolidated, there was one, I think the 12 Alpha Division was here and I just moved them there. That's an airfield and a town. I figured I could have moved up to meet them, but I was like, you know what, I will stay in the town. There's better, a little bit better defensive benefit being in the town. You get the positive DRM. Um, and then, so if we look here, so this is, remember, that way is north. So, and I have the star here. So everything on the, this is the 33 row on the map. And then they go up. So this is 33, 34, 35, you get the point, right? So everything on the 33 row and north as far as towns, cities, and urban areas are worth double victory points. So the, that's the reason I decided, let me see, let me move that up there. That's the reason I decided to make my stand here rather than meet these guys here, like move them here and attack, I'll stay in this town because there's a little bit of an advantage to stay in that town and I don't want them getting double VPs for towns. So there you have it. That is the movement. I will figure out what kind of combats are gonna be and then I will be back. 
All right, I only had one combat that the, the Pakistanis are going to do. Everything else is just not favorable for them. Uh, really not worth it. So this is probably the best that I think they can do. So we are going to use this unit and these two units are going to attack right here. It's 21 to 18. We did throw both headquarters in there. So that's, let me see, what is that? 6, 12, 15, 18, 21. And they have a total of 16. Through the headquarters in there, 18. So that's where I get that. Turns into one to one, minus one DRM for the remainder. There are no column shifts. And plus one for multi formation because we have first core and looks like 30th core. So there's a there's a slight penalty for different units working together that aren't normally used to working together. US units, I, I think that that rule is overlooked for the US or NATO players because they're used to working together a lot. So I think I got that right. So it's one to one in flat. That's a four. It looks like each side takes a loss. Um, this was the lead unit because he had the higher efficiency rating. And this was the lead unit, not because he had the higher efficiency rating, but because I don't want that 1811 unit being reduced. So there we go. And that will take care of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan basic movement and combat. Um, isolation and surrender. I don't think that's really going to count. That's the isolation surrender phase. That's such a rare occurrence. And now we do reorg. So basically I'll be back after I've taken care of all the reorganization, reinforcement, and replacements. And then we will be done with turn one. All right, I've just completed the reorganization phase. Basically, it's just clean up, right? Rotating headquarters, um, removing strike markers, removing detected markers, removing markers, 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 right? Um, Pakistan has one installation that's destroyed, which is right, right here underneath that stack. So that's the installation that's been destroyed. They are not going to spend any points to rebuild that reason being is there these guys are right here right like what's the point of rebuilding that if if it's in jeopardy of being captured right so I'm not going to spend any supply points to repair that uh, both sides received two replacement points which I did not actually spend yet um, Pakistan received no reinforcements and then this is what India received. So basically they received five aircraft and two artillery brigades. Those are placed on hex 2722, which is on the eastern side of the map right here. So I will go ahead and place those. We need to get those into combat. The aircraft go right to the ready box. So I will move those over to the ready box and we do have some replacement points. Let me look real quick. Replacement reconstruction. So step recovery is probably to reconstitute a division. What do we have? missing oh we have a lot I could reconstitute I cannot reconstitute a division they cost four points that is way too much I can probably I think what I'm gonna do is just do some step recovery maybe they cannot be in a Zoc So nothing there. I can reconstitute. Oh, you can't see that. So I can not reconstitute. I can step recovery that because he's not in a ZOC. So I'm probably going to do that. And that might be the only, yeah, I'm going to do that. So that cost one replacement point. 
which I will spend, and I don't think anybody else can do that. Yeah, that guy's in a Zox, so he can't do it. Um, and everything else I'm looking at is in a Zox. Uh, India also has two replacement points. Can't do those guys because they're in a Zox. I can do that guy. I can do this armor as well. Let me look. Let's see here. An armor, is that a brigade? Where is it? That's a brigade. An armor brigade. Looks like it costs two. It would cost both points to reconstitute that. What about a light, light infantry? That guy right here would cost one. How about a headquarters? That's a core. One supply point. All right. So I definitely want to take that. So that's a supply point. Went down to 39. I think my only options. Sorry about that. So I've got a couple guys up here. I've got these mountain guys up here. I don't, both of those are kind of hurting pretty bad. That's a light infantry brigade. I can do that. I don't know if it's worth it though. That's the problem is, is it, is it worth it? Is it worth these guys? Chances are they're not gonna be able to do a whole lot against them. Is that a fight worth doing? I don't know. Um, and one thing too that I noticed while I was playing is these guys I'm pretty sure are out of supply so this whole this whole core is out of supply this this headquarters needs to get that way I think because a supply depot can do eight motorized so that's let's look here's a supply depot so that is one two three four five six seven eight if I get him there I should be good um, and then my other supply depot is down here so that is one one and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half five and a half six and a half seven and a half yeah so I need to get him there um, so where was I at anyway I was trying to rebuild some units. What about that infantry division? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. An infantry division. That only costs one. I'm going to spend one point on this guy. And I think I'll spend the other point. What about the armor brigade? An armor brigade costs two, so I'm not going to do that. I will do this mountain infantry right here. And that will take care of India's replacement points. So that is it. That is the end of Oh, you know what else I can do too? I can consolidate um, Consolidating air units. As long as they're the same kind I think I might be able to turn these two Mirages into one. Now, what I have to do. 27932. Is that a GSR thing? Certain air units cannot be reconsolidated. It's probably like a more of a NATO thing. I'll look that up later. Um, so anyway, that is the end of game turn one. Thanks for watching.